you ever been in a bluegrass jam you've almost definitely heard somebody say one four five in reference to the chords or some other set of numbers and if that's confusing well all that's happening is that we have a system to number the chords in a given key that's based on this thing called the nashville number system which is this kind of simplified but also expanded version of classical music theory where we use roman numerals to analyze chords and stuff. The Nashville number system was developed to help people read charts really quickly. It's sort of like the shortcut for reading sheet music. The bluegrass version of that is even more simple, so if any of that sounds complicated, don't worry. It's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So the first thing to understand is that all those numbers are in reference to the one. So let's figure out what the one is. Let's start with the key of C because it's pretty easy to work with. If you take the key of C major, and we're going to play a C major scale. So we'll start with C, and then D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So those are all the notes of the C scale. Now if we line them up and we give them all number values, we start with C, and that's 1. The next note's D, so we'll have that be 2. Then E is 3, F is 4, G is 5, a is 6, B is 7, and then we're back to C, so that's 1 again. So now we've numbered all of the notes of the C major scale. So let's figure out how to make some chords out of those. We could do a long conversation about the theory behind why chords are the way they are, made up of the notes that they are, but we don't need to get into that. All we need to know is that we're in C major, so we want the 1 to be C major. So for a major chord, we're always going to use the third note in the scale and the fifth note in the scale along with the first note. So in that case, we have C, which is the first note. If we look for the third note, that's going to be E. And then the fifth note is going to be G. If we put those together, we would have a C major chord. Now, if we had a keyboard or a piano, we could play those in that order, but on our instrument we're probably going to have to put them in a different order so we can play them all at the same time. That's no problem. On the mandolin we usually play this is our most basic C chord, and this is G, E, C, E. It's still a C major chord because it just has those three notes in it. So what if we wanted to find what the chord value for D is, in this case the second note of the C major scale? Well, we would take the D, and we would count up the same number of steps that we did for the C. So what I mean by that is, if we started with C, we started this is 1, then D is 2, E is 3. That's how we found the third note. Well, let's do that same thing, but start with D. So D would be 1, E would be 2, now F is going to be 3. So that's our third note. Now G would be 4 and A is going to be 5. So if we're using the first, third, and fifth notes, then we're going to have D, F, and A. Now if we play those three notes together, we would have a D minor chord. And there's a technical explanation for why that's a D minor chord, but that's a different video. Right now we're just talking about putting together the notes in this pattern. So we have D, F, and A, a D minor. So what we can do is we know C, E, and G, that's a C major chord. So the one we can say is one major. The second chord is D minor. So what we'll say is it's a two minor chord. Now, if we kept on going and figuring out the chords for each one of these notes, then what we would get is C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and then a kind of funky one. It's a B half diminished, is something like, and then C. So those are what we're going to work with, which is our one major, two minor, three minor, four major, five major, six minor, seven half diminished, and one major. So this is true for every instance of a major key. If we wanted to do this with the notes from the A major scale, 
We could do the same thing where we'd number them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. And then find the first, third, and fifth notes for all of them. It would come out the same with one major, two minor, three minor, four major, five major, six minor, seven half diminished, and one. It's not necessary to memorize every single iteration of these chords and what numbers go with them for all of the keys, though. The most important things for you to remember are that the first, the fourth, and the fifth chord are all major chords. So if you're playing a song and somebody says, this is one, four, five, what they mean is that you're only going to be using the first, the fourth, and the fifth chords, which are all major. So if you're playing in the key of C, and it's one, four, five, then the chords are just going to be C, F major, G major, in some sort of order. And people will probably explain to you what the order is. If you're in A, then it's going to be A major, D major, E major, and A major, in whatever key you're in. So if you're working on learning chords and trying to learn the chords to songs, I'd recommend figuring out the patterns on your instrument between the one, the four, and the five chord. Because knowing those patterns will make it easier for you to bounce around the fretboard rather than having to memorize each individual chord and its instance and its number and things like that. Now I'd like to talk about some sort of specific things related to bluegrass and some sort of slang, I guess, that bluegrass people use when referring to this numbering system. You may have noticed and potentially been intimidated by the seven half diminished chord. Uh, when we were in C, it's B half diminished. You're not going to have to learn that chord. <laughs> it will never come up in a jam if you're playing bluegrass. However, people will say that you need to play a seven chord. And what they mean by that actually, almost always, is flat seven major. So let's figure, let's break that down. So if we're in C major, let's find the flat seven. So what that means is that we need the seventh note, so in this case it's B. So we need to add a flat to that. And a flat's going to make this note go down by a half step. Or in terms of our instrument, that just means going down by one fret. Down to here, which is B flat. Now we need a major chord based on B flat. Now this is the part where you kind of have to know some more chords. But you could use the same way that we found the C major chord originally. If you start with the B, then you go up to the third note of the B flat scale, and then to the fifth note, you have B flat, D, and F. That's a B flat major. So B flat major is the flat seven of C. Flat seven comes up a lot in bluegrass songs. For example, if we're in the key of G, somebody might be calling a song and say that there's a seven chord, and what they mean is that there's an F chord, because F is the flat seven of G. An example might be a tune like Wheelhouse, which is G, F, G, F, G, F, D, G, or one, seven, one, seven, one, seven, five, one. When people are saying seven in this case, they're almost always referring to the flat seven major. And part of it's just the shorthand. You heard me saying it would be harder to go one flat seven major, one flat seven major. So part of it's just the shorthand. Uh, also just those that half diminished chord does never really come up. So in bluegrass, it's almost always going to be a flat seven major. Another example of this sort of shorthand is going to be the six minor chord. In a bluegrass jam, people are almost always just going to say it has a six chord. They're not going to clarify that it's a minor chord. That's because in bluegrass, it's almost always going to be a six minor chord. Now, there are some circumstances where it's a six major, but in most cases, people will clarify the most likely th that you are to run into that would be if you were somehow in a swing jam, because swing songs have a lot of six major chords in them. Bluegrass songs don't really have six major chords in them that often. Don't at me. I know about the historical <laughs> reasons, but the six minor chord is going to come up a lot. Now, on the other hand, with two minor and three minor, people will usually clarify that it's a two minor and a three minor. Three minor, it's almost always going to be a minor and it's not going to come up very often. There are a few pretty specific circumstances with songs like Lonesome Pine or uh, Ginseng Sullivan or Dixie Hoedown, things like that. 
but that's almost always going to be a three minor chord. The two minor chord, on the other hand, will sometimes be a major chord. It with like more modern bluegrass songs, there are two minor chords, but most of the time it's actually going to be a major chord. So if somebody says there's a two chord in the song, they probably mean that it's a major chord. You could ask them to clarify if you're not sure, but if they're saying there's a two chord, they probably mean two major. Now, this is because the two chord leads to the five chord, and there's a music theory explanation for that, but that's just how it comes up a lot. Probably the most common example of this is going to be in Old Home Place. The chorus starts on a five chord, then it goes up to the one chord, and then it goes up to the two major chord, which in this case is A major, and then back to the five again. So what that sounds like is if we're in G. What have we done to the G old place up to A major? Did they tear it down back to the five? In most cases in bluegrass, it's going to be a two major. There are some cases where it'll be a minor, but if somebody says we're going to the two or there's a two chord, they probably mean two major instead of the two minor, which is the natural chord here. So I hope this is helpful the next time you hear people calling out a bunch of numbers at a jam. I, again, I recommend if you're working on chords, trying to find the one, four, and five chord based out of whatever key you're playing in and sort of get to know that relationship. And while you're playing, think of it as, okay, I'm playing the one chord, I'm gonna go to F, which is the four chord. And now I'm gonna go up to five, so G chord. And then back to the one. And then I'm gonna go to the six, so A minor. And then maybe the four. Now maybe the two major. And maybe back to the five. And maybe the one. How about a flat seven? Now maybe the five again. And then the one again. Something like that. You know, just thinking about those relationships and getting them in your head. I hope this was helpful, and I hope you have fun playing music.